I'm now going to tell you a little bit about the story of the um, of the variable focus lens and its application to correction of vision. So here we are. I will start. This is my. This is a, a note of a conversation. I had a conversation in March 1985 with a colleague, a friend, who said to me, can you make vari a variable focus lens? And at that time, I um, didn't know much about this field. So the thing starts, well, to be fair, actually, I remember when I was a little boy, I made a variable focus mirror. So I've obviously had something. Um, I, I took a, a frame and I... I, I stuck uh, some aluminium foil on this frame and I had a means of pumping the frame out. I did this when I was about 10 and I, I was fascinated to see that you could make a mirror and you could change the magnification. So that was in my, in my background, going back to when I was about 10, I was playing with, I used to do things like that. I used to make little bits of um, scientific kit. And, um, well, then I forgot about that. Um, I wrote a paper actually on uh, something in uh, atomic physics where I, I put the phrase in, in the absence of a variable power, for variable focal length lens, we must use a combination of lenses. But this, this uh, friend of mine said, can you make a variable focus lens? And um, I, my in the initial response to him was no. And then I said, oh yeah, yeah, you can make a variable focus lens. And what I did was I sketched a lens, and that's a sketch of my first variable focus lens. There it is. And I sketched this, and that was, um, you know, in the afternoon of the 27th of March, 1985. And what I did was I went up to my lab and I thought, I'll make one. So... I went to the lab that afternoon. Now, I had, I, I, I kept uh, lots of different bits and pieces of things so that I could make things if I wanted to. And in fact, I had some thin plastic sheets, thin membranes uh, in a drawer. And so I went to, um, I went to the research workshop I rummaged around in a box. I found uh, this uh, scrap aluminium ring. Um, I got some of my, I drilled two holes in it. One for a syringe, I'll show you. I shall take a syringe from a. Drilled a hole in this ring in the research workshop uh, for a syringe that so you can pop in there. I drilled another hole, tapped it, and had a little screw so you could do up the screw. And then I, I got some araldite and I stuck uh, membranes to the front and back of this ring with araldite. And I uh, went to a tap and I filled up the, let it set, filled up this syringe and uh, put the thing to my eye and changed the amount of uh, water in the syringe, filled it up with water. I looked through it and I, I found that I could get a variable power lens. So this is my first variable power lens um, from March 1985. It didn't work very well because the surfaces uh, of the plastic surfaces are a bit wrinkly. So it doesn't work very well as a lens. So there we are, that and that sat there and I started thinking about this. And then um, Actually, for reasons that I, I must say were not clear to me, I don't know why I did this, but I thought, well, I'll make a better one. So, uh, it turns out, you see, in fact, if you look here, you'll see that the way I initially um, had, the idea I initially had for sealing the membrane was to use a little rubber o-ring and a clamp plate. But that doesn't actually work very well. And in fact... Because I'm a little bit lazy, when I made the thing, I didn't clamp it at all. I just stuck the plastic on and uh, tried it. But then, um, one of the, the weakness of this thing as a variable focus lens is that the surface is not good. So, 
I um, I thought I happen to know a technique for sealing and stretching membranes from work I had done, plus thin plastic membranes, from work I had done in the 1970s. And so I designed a much better variable focus lens. I did that in May, on the 13th of May, 1985. This is my original design note. Um, I had two of these things made. This is one of my original prototypes. Um, basically, you have thin plastic sheets and you have and you clamp the whole thing together and the action of clamping seals and stretches the membranes. So this was my... Oh, in between these, actually, somewhere I, I have a whole load of prototypes which, don't, uh, which are intermediate between this one and this one. Still have them somewhere. Um, but, and they didn't use this... Uh, sealing and stretching method, but this was um, this is a, a very important step in the evolution of the variable focus, of my variable focus lens, because um, with this thing, if you fill this with water and you look through it and you change the amount of water in there, you find that the it, it isn't doesn't work at the moment because it doesn't have fluid in it. But if you filled it up with water and did what I'm doing, you would find that you could change the power. Now, this lens was a crucial step forward because um, what I found with this lens was that when I looked in the distance and changed the power, I could very accurately correct my short sight or myopia or short sight. And that set me thinking. Um, and set me think here, and let's just let's review where we've got to. This is a lens of variable power, which can be made for a few pennies, which has the feature that when you look through it and change the amount of fluid in it, you can accurately correct your own vision. And remember, this was in May 1985. So, I knew in May 1985 that I could make. Uh, a lens for pennies and that then I could correct my vision without the need for any professional and that set me thinking and I am an experimental scientist so I had a few uh, a few research ideas a uh, research idea number one is uh, if I can accurately correct my vision can other people do it